for linear differential equations, x prime equals ax, where x is a scalar, we know the solution. x equals e to the power at times a constant. We can extend this idea to differential equations of the form x prime equals a times x, where x is now a vector and a is a matrix. In order to do so, we need to be able to calculate the matrix exponential function e to the power at, where a is a matrix. We can compute this matrix exponential function using the ideas of the matrix exponential, and in this video you will see how this is done. So we want to compute the following function f of t equals e to the power at. So how do we define this? We use the power series n from 0 to infinity, uh, take what is in the exponential to the power n and divide by n factorial. So what we get for the first few terms, n equals 0 gives identity matrix, n equals 1 gives at, n equals 2 gives 1 half at, uh, a squared t squared, and then if you do n equals 3, you get 1 over 3 factorial, a cubed t cubed. And that is our matrix exponential function. Well, it's an infinite series. Uh, let's take a look at an easy case uh, to see how this is computed. So what if we have A equals D, just a diagonal matrix? Uh, then we can take, for example, this D over here. We just do the 2 by 2 case. Larger cases go exactly the same. So if you know how to do 2 by 2, you can do the larger ones as well. Uh, then it is easy to compute D to the power N just the numbers on the diagonal to the power n, and then we have e to the power t, so by definition n from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial d to the power n, t to the power n, here, that's our def definition over here, with a equals d, now we can plug in uh, d to the power n, that's what we've done over here, and then we can take in the t to the power n, because it's just matrix times a number, and we can take in the 1 over n factorial, so then we have the matrix elements uh, uh, lambda 1 to the power n times t to the power n over n factorial. And then uh, adding matrices means adding the uh, elements of the matrix, so we can take the sum in as well. So we get a sum over here and a sum over there. And then we see, hey, we recognize this sum. The sum is just e to the power lambda 1 t, and the other sum is just e to the power lambda 2 t. So there we go. If we have a diagonal matrix D, then e to the power dt is just a diagonal matrix with numbers e to the power lambda 1t and e to the power lambda 2t. And that's of course so easy because d to the power n is so easy. Let's do a slightly more complicated example. So what happens if a is not equal to d, but if a is similar to d? So a is PDP inverse. Now, then we can plug it in. So then uh, a to the power n becomes b times e to the power n times p inverse, that's over here. Then again, uh, the p and the p inverse, there are no n's there, so you can take them out of the sum, mind the order, so the p has to go in front and the p inverse has to go to the back, and we have something in between the brackets. But what is in between the brackets, we have seen that already over here, that is exactly e to the power dt, and we know how to compute e to the power dt. So if a is similar to d, then we can also compute e to the power at. It's just p times e to the power dt times p inverse. So let's do some examples. So if you have a diagonal matrix d, then it's easy. So here we have some diagonal matrix, 4, 0, 0, minus 1. Then e to the power dt is just uh, e to the power 4t and e to the power minus 1t on the diagonal. If you have a second example where a is similar to this d from example 1 with some matrix p, then we also can compute a to the power e to the power at easily. It is in the middle e to the power dt and here a p and a p inverse. So there we go. And some find, uh, finally some nice check uh, with this f of t equals e to the power at. Let us check whether f prime is indeed uh, as we want a times f. Well, if we compute f prime, uh, we can take in the ddt, uh, so we have to differentiate t to the power n, gives n times t to the power n minus 1, that's over here. The n over n factorial becomes a 1 over 
uh, n minus 1 factorial. So if we uh, set m equals n minus 1, we, so we shift the summation index, we get an m factorial and m factorial and a to the power m plus 1. Now you can take 1 a out. So what you get is a times sum 1 over m factorial a to the power m t to the power m. But that's exactly your, your original f of t. So indeed, as you probably would ha have expected, if you have the function f of t equals e to the power at, then f prime is indeed a times e to the power uh, at.